Alexandria lies along a 20-kilometre stretch of Mediterranean coast. It's Egypt's Riviera. You won't find any bikinis here, but the sun, sea and cafes still pull in a million extra bodies every summer. There's more to this city, though, than meets the eye. Its treasures are largely hidden, under the ground and beneath the sea. More than 2,000 years after it was built, archaeologists have discovered what they believe to be the royal quarters of the Ptolemies, the Greek dynasty whose golden rule over Alexandria ended in 30 BC with the death of its most famous daughter, Cleopatra. Some of the riches from that time have surfaced, but so far not a trace of what is arguably the Ptolemies' greatest creation, the ancient library. Its collection of papyrus scrolls was said to have contained the knowledge of the entire world. Alexandria was uh, the capital of the Hellenistic world. Jean-Yves Empereur is one of Alexandria's leading archaeologists. The ancient library, he fears, may never be discovered. Most of the city's ruins are buried under tons of concrete, or highway bitumen, as is now the case with this necropolis. What was um, Ptolemy's aim in building the library? I think, so first of all, it was uh, <clears throat> to collect all the knowledge of the world net then, in any language, any region, to know uh, who were the people living in Egypt and in the surrounding countries. To have the knowledge of the world net means to have the power. Alexandria has built its reputation on its glorious ancient past, but in the new millennium, it wants to be recognised not only for what was, but for what is. And you can't miss this, the Bibliotheca Alexandrina, the new library which Egypt hopes will be the next wonder of the world. Expense has been spared in creating the new Alexandria Library. The construction bill alone is likely to reach $300 million. It's an international project sponsored by the United Nations cultural body UNESCO. Countries from around the world have donated money, services and materials. We're looking at the, one, the site of the famous Pharos Lighthouse, one of the ancient wonders of the ancient world, where the fortress is located now, mm -hmm. since the 15th century. And of course, uh, you are uh, in the same place where the ancient library was created at one time. So you Mohsen Zaran is the project manager for the new library. He believes it doesn't really matter where the old library lies, or even if it's found. It's the legacy which is important. The legend is uh, more of a, a propulsion for us to be at the level of excellence that it was and even do better because we have more resources and better capabilities today. The circular shape of the, of the library symbolizes that uh, myth that says that the ancient library had contained all the knowledge of the Western world at that time. Christoph Capella is an architect with the Norwegian firm Snoetta, which designed the library. He says the angled roof, an aluminium sheeted disc, is meant to resemble a microchip. It's a perfect example for something that is not just a, a repository for books or a storage room. It's an active element that, that has influences to the outside and it's like an exchange of ideas, an exchange of Conductor currents. Of knowledge exactly. Egypt wants this to be more than just a library. The complex includes a large conference centre and a planetarium. The aim is to attract academics from all disciplines, to develop a centre of debate, discovery and invention, one which mirrors the ancient library, whose scholars calculated the circumference of the globe, the length of the year 
and laid much of the foundations for geometry, astrology and mathematics. The engine room for this new intellectual powerhouse will be the stepped public reading hall. Bigger than a football stadium, it will accommodate 2,000 people at any one time and eventually, it's hoped, 8 million books and an array of manuscripts and audiovisual material. The library will be struggling to open with any more than a few hundred thousand books on its shelves, 5% of capacity. Under lights in a back room, a team of workers is busy sorting and cataloguing the available books. 40% have been donated by other countries. Pre-loved seems the best definition for a lot of them. But Rome wasn't built in a day, and even the ancient library had to resort to dubious means to fill its halls with half a million papyrus scrolls. Ptolemy II was very fond of papyri to, to collect them uh, to his library, so he stopped all the ships entering in the harbour, and the customs then um, seized the papyri, and they made copies of them. Book piracy? Yes, exactly. And uh, they said, the ancient authors said that the, many times Ptolemy II gave back the copies and took the original to, to his library. The king Ptolemy tried to collect all books which were published all over the world and, and to keep them here. With the digital age, it's not necessary for any library to, to, to do that today. French librarian and project consultant Gerald Gromberg says the World Wide Web is today's most comprehensive source of information. Modern libraries, he says, must specialise. In Alexandria's case, the focus will be Egypt and the Mediterranean. Its collection includes 5,000 rare manuscripts from the 10th to 18th centuries. But what is done by the library is to try to get copies of other very important Arabic manuscripts which are in other countries. And for example, Spain gave the complete collection of the manuscripts of the Escurial Library. While the Alexandria Library worries about what works it can acquire, some writers and academics worry about what it might reject. The American University of Cairo is one of Egypt's premier tertiary institutions. Its library, one of the country's biggest. But over the past couple of years, Islamic protest and government censors have forced this library to pull 100 titles from its shelves. One book, on the public racks for 30 years, was removed after being accused of blaspheming the Prophet Muhammad. There is a battle in Egypt today between forces of progress, enlightenment, openness, and forces of control, of oppression, of reaction, of conservatism. I have been at AUC for 25 years. Uh, never until two years ago had we had these controversies over books that have been on our shelves for so many years. Dr. Saadeddin Ibrahim is a sociology professor at the university. He's not shy of speaking his mind. In Egypt, that can get you into trouble, jail even, as he knows from experience. He says writers who don't want to fall foul of the censors must follow some basic rules. They call the red lines, don't step over the red line, don't attack the president of his family, for example. Don't get involved in religious issues or theological issues, because that is always a, an explosive thing. How important is it that the Alexandria Library is a place where there is freedom of speech and thought? Unless there is total freedom of thinking, of expression and so on, it will just be a building with books or with desks or with whatever. But to have a spirit, to have a soul, to have life, to have dynamism, it has to be free.
Those who work at the Alexandria Library say censorship is simply not an issue. I've been here now for three years and a half. Huh? What I can say is that until now, I never heard about censorship. Project manager Mohsen Zaran says the Egyptian government is committed to building a library for all of humankind. The aim is not only to benefit our time, our time and beyond, as the ancient scholars of the library have done their own for themselves and for ourselves. Our present civilization is based on the giving of these scholars. Mm. We owe the coming generations this commitment as our grand-grandfathers have done to us. Providing for future generations is not just a lofty ideal. The library's patron and prime mover is Suzanne Mubarak, the wife of the Egyptian president. This new school in Alexandria is one of the products of her drive to boost literacy across the country. The First Lady has called her campaign Reading for All. And what better crown than a glorious new public library in Alexandria? Egypt hopes the new library will herald a new cultural dawn for Alexandria, one which puts it back where it was in antiquity, at the centre of the known world. But even if it doesn't quite achieve that, it's still won over those closest to it. Do you think you'll come back and ever use it as a library? I might, why not? Yeah, of course. As a reader, I would like to come here and to read here. It's not the case in many libraries. <laughs> and you've helped build it. How long do you think this library will stay standing? Ah, for good. Hmm. For good, forever. Hmm. <laughs>